friends welcome to lecture video series on the subject renewable energy resources here we are going to discuss about model 2 model 2 consists of two chapters one is solar thermal energy collector another one is photovoltaic cell or solar cell in model 2 we are going to concentrate in solar energy how the solar energy is used for the application as a natural resources solar sun energy is a natural resources how much energy can be utilized for the domestic applications or any kind of application by using the natural resources is nothing but solar energy only we are consuming 40 to 50 percentage because that much of hardware devices only we have to absorb the the solar energy solar energy is a clean energy and it is a cheap energy and enormously available renewable energy solar energy can be used in two ways either we can directly use the solar energy as a thermal energy or indirectly we can use this solar energy as a electrical energy by using the a semiconductor device we call it as a solar photovoltaic cell this cell which is used to convert the solar energy into electricity in cold climate region or any other region in a winter side the large amount of thermal energy is required to heat the air to maintain the comfort conditions in space if you visit uh, American countries or in uh, Western countries the climate is very too chill in India in summer we need of air conditioner in winter it is normal it's not going below the minus degree Celsius very rare but if you go to the abroad most of the places the climatic condition is going less than the zero degree Celsius or minus degree Celsius so there are the people who wants heater to heat the particular room in the sense we can use this solar energy as a heater so the thermal energy which is required to heat the air to maintain the comfort condition in a space and also to heat the water water heater what for washing the cloths cleaning and drying or we can use for domestic applications or industrial needs wherever we can use this the thermal energy therm solar thermal energy thermal means heat energy is a resource so heat energy solar solar means sun sun's heat energy is utilized for the various application how it can be utilized by using the a device we call it as a collector here we are going to study in this chapter what are the various collectors are used to absorb the sun energy and that solar energy is converted into heat energy and wherever we need there we can use how the conversion process is taking place suppose I want to heat this room if I want to cool this room I can use a refrigerator sorry air conditioner if I want to heat this room in the sense how what are the devices can be used in the sense conventional system can be used to heat this by heating the water and converting the water into vapor and passing the vapor through this roof we can heat the room but in solar energy in solar system it's a natural system with the help of sun energy we are heating the space we want to dry the crops we can use the solar energy system as a solar thermal 
energetic energy system for the drying the crops washing the uh, cloths with the hot water or room space heating everything can be done by using this solar thermal energy collector and next technology is nothing but photovoltaic cell or otherwise it is called as a solar cell the solar cell can be used either solar power plant or solar photovoltaic cells to get an industrial i mean to get an electricity installing the solar energy in more than million houses it is the target for an indian renewable energy development agency and the ministry of non conventional energy sources they are working continuously to install the solar energy more than the million houses in the shortest time to increase the uses of the solar energy the uh, presented in the conference 2030 most of the houses in the india which will be installing the solar cells for the applications like domestic lighting solar water heating street light lighting village electrification railway signals desalination of saline water that is nothing but salt water conversion water pumping space heating solar cooking and space cooling solar green houses powering of remote communication stations these are all the uh, applications of the solar cells so solar energy can be broadly used either with the technology called solar thermal conversion process or solar photovoltaic conversion process first we will see the solar thermal uh, conversion process so sun's heat energy is a diffuse energy it is always collected then concentrated for that we are using a device we call it as a collector so collector will absorb the sun's energy solar energy and converted into heat energy okay how the heat energy is converted in the sun solar energy is passed through the glass material and with absorber and inside that glass material the pipe will be fixed inside the pipe the water is flowing or any fluid is flowing in the sense then the cold water is converted into hot water with the help of this solar wind radiation <coughs> so residential panels for the heat collections are also we are using the various collectors there are two types of collectors one is a flat plate collector another one is a parabolic collector or concentrated collectors in water heating system we are using solar water heating system we are using a flat plate collector sometimes the evacuated plate uh, plate collectors are also used so solar energy collectors are a special kind of heat exchangers that transforms the solar radiation energy into a uh, internal energy of the transport medium so solar energy collectors is nothing but a special kind of heat exchanger so solar energy is converted into heat energy okay and it is the uh, internal energy of the transport medium the major component of the any solar system in the sense it is a solar collector so solar collector which absorbs the incoming uh, solar radiation and converts it into heat then it transfers the heat to the fluid fluid in the sense either water will be used or any ammonia fluid will be used or propane will be used or it can be oil also be used which is flowing through the collector if you take a solar water heater in you have seen in the many metropolitan cities in the roof of the building the solar water heater is installed in the sense there is a panel will be there and one more boiler will be there so the boiler and the panel will be panel is nothing but the collector so inside the collector there will be evacuated tubes where the water will be flowing through the tube and based upon the sun's radiation or incident on that particular plate the water which is flowing in the 
tube will be get heated now the outlet is nothing but hot water inlet is nothing but cold water so solar radiation is converted into heat energy this is the concept so solar collectors normally uh, uh, this uh, solar energy collector is carried from circulating fluid either directly to the hot water or space conditioning room heating purpose also it can be used or the same heat energy can be stored in a, a separate tank it is called as a thermal storage tank from which we can use during night time and cloudy time or rainy time to heat these particular space or to heat the water to dry the crops or to uh, make the cooling system for the uh, room surface the same thermal energy can be used so thermal energy can be collected uh, and it will be sorry sun energy will be collected and converted into solar energy and the solar energy that is nothing but the thermal energy can be transferred that can be stored and that can be converted so three process will be taken place by the solar collectors so solar collectors can be used a large variety of applications the uh, we have a following areas where the solar collectors are used in the sense the first point is nothing but solar water heating solar space heating solar refrigeration industrial process heat uh, system solar uh, desalination system solar thermal power generation system here and all the solar collectors or solar uh, absorbing devices are used solar water heating system in the sense which includes thermosiphon process thermosiphon process in the sense either it is a active solar water heating system or passive solar water heating system so thermosiphon is coming under passive water solar system heating which is used in the uh, house or home uh, applications which is integrated uh, collector storage system air system direct circulation system indirect water heating system that is all coming under the solar water heating system solar space heating system in the sense which includes both uh, water and air system for heating the particular space or particular slab or particular compartment or particular chamber and solar refri refrigeration system in the sense it includes both adsorption process and absorption process so absorption and adsorption both process will be taking place and industrial process heat system in the sense which includes both low temperature and solar steam generation that is low temperature in the sense air and water based applications and solar steam generation with the help of steam generation that uh, electricity can be uh, generated or with the help of steam generation any textile um, things can be uh, dried or the crops can be dried or tobacco seeds tea seeds coffee seeds can be used to uh, dry or remove the moisture this industrial process heat systems can be used and then solar desalination system in the sense which includes both the direct or indirect system direct system and an indirect system that means conventional desalination equipment also used with the help of solar collectors so salination is nothing but the salt water is converted into pure water so for that purpose we can use this solar desalination this is solar collectors uh, and solar thermal power generation in the sense which includes a parabolic trough system and power tower that is a heliostatic power tower system and central receiver system as like a parabolic dish system and uh, stirling engine system also be used for the power generation so stirling engine in the sense it is a heat engine operating by cyclic compression and expansion there is any temperature variation in the chamber the compression and expansion will be taking place based upon that the piston movement will be there in the, the chamber so which can be used for the generation of electricity that means this uh, mechanical movement is converted into electrical movement okay the solar energy is converted into the heat energy is converted into mechanical energy and mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy with the help of the stirling engine or otherwise we call it as a brighton engine 
So Brighton engine and Stirling engine is nothing but which uh, it is a heat engine uh, which is operating by cyclist compression method compression and expansion based upon the temperature room temperature that we are going to see based upon the uh, chamber temperature or that particular piston temperature okay and uh, any other air or gas or working fluid are also used at a different temperature level in order to convert that heat energy into mechanical energy similar to the steam engine we are using the stirling engine is a traditionally classified as external combustion engine as all heat transfers to uh, working fluid and from the working fluid is taking place through the engine wall there is a wall is there inside that everything is taking place and one more thing is it is a, a steam engine uh, where for generation of electricity we can go with the heliostat receiver in the sense in that heliostat receiver is nothing but yes uh, uh, tallest tower where the uh, receiver will be kept in the tower and uh, below the tower many mirrors are kept which can focus to the line of sight to the receiver so whenever the sun rays falls onto this uh, mirror that energy will be reflected back that can be observed by the receiver in the top of the tower there is a one system is used called as a rank and cycle system inside that the water is converted into steam and steam is moved to rotate the uh, prime mover that is called as a turbine and the turbine which is connected to the generator which will produce the electricity so this is nothing but the rank and rank in cycle process or heliostat process so the amount of heat energy produced by the solar collector is normally depends upon the what type of collector we are using what is the working surface direction uh, towards the sun what is the meteorological conditions like uh, weather condition the location and many other factors we are going to discuss in this uh, topic